and today we're looking at how to smoke spare ribs. The first thing that we're going to need is to prepare the ribs and we're going to do that by making a rub. And here are the ingredients. We have the chili powder, the paprika, oregano, salt, black pepper, garlic powder, brown sugar. If you want to make life easier, you could just go ahead and buy one at the store. Nobody's looking. Don't worry. But the advantages of making your own is going to be fresh and it might be cheaper too. You can always Google in the interweb for more recipes. So it's time to get our hands dirty. Let's take the rub and let's put it on those ribs and let's make sure that we get full coverage on both the back and the front. It's all up to you how long before you want to put the rub. If you want to do it 15 minutes before, an hour before, four hours before, eight hours, or the day before. I usually don't plan when I'm going to have a smoke out. So I'm that guy that does it one hour before. So let's go ahead and turn on that charcoal. Get your chimney starter out. Get your paper, leaves, newspaper, paper towel, and let's light this one on fire. So once you choose your desired method of burn, what we want to do, we want to light it in different places. So we could get an even turn on. Always remember when grilling, barbecuing, or smoking to use safety. Once we see that fire on the charcoal and it looks white, that means they're on. Let's dump the charcoal slowly on the grill to avoid any flying debris. Because the last thing you want is to end up in one of those vines 2016. We're going to use the 60-40. That means we're going to have the charcoal on the 40% of the side to have the 60% empty to add our water and dripping pan. And always remember, you can add water, juice, beer. I even seen wine, soda. I don't judge. You could use aluminum pans, but I'd rather use this. I bought these in the dollar store been using them for years they're still going strong adding water to the pan it's going to keep it moist and at the same time act as a dripping pan so you get a two and one effect if you want to go the extra mile you could preheat the water so it doesn't have to catch up to the temperature so today we're going to use pecan wood chunks if you want to use wood chips soak them in water 15 minutes before and then drain them before using them and just throw them right in the charcoal i always like to add two or three additional charcoal so they could burn at different times and now you add the wood chunk. Let's go ahead and close the grill. Let's take the vent holes to a quarter open and let it heat up for five minutes. So once the grill is hot, this is the perfect time if you need to clean the grill. The grease would be easier to take off. Meanwhile, the grate is hot. Let's go ahead now and season the grill. And we do this by taking paper towel, a little bit of vegetable oil or any kind of oil that you would like to use and pass it over the grate. Let's go ahead and put the ribs on the grill. Once you've done that, now we can put the lid on the grill. And remember, when you close the lid, you want to put the vent hole to the side of the meat. And that way, the smoke would have to go through the meat to escape. If your grill does not have a thermometer, this would be the time to add a thermometer so we can monitor the temperature. The goal temperature you want to reach is 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to place the thermometer on the side of the meat, not the charcoal. And you want to get to that temperature by opening and closing the vents and remember the more open you have the vents the more airflow they're gonna get so that means the hotter it's gonna get you want to flip your ribs every hour So at the second hour, we also want to flip the rib. But before that, we want to move around the charcoal to get the ashes off. And at the same time, add a couple of more charcoals and two extra chunks of wood. If you're using wood chips, you might want to do that every half an hour. At the third hour, now we could check the internal temperature of the rib. If they mark from 175 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, then they're done. I like to take mines to 190. That's when the fats and collagen start melting. All up to you on how done you want your rib. So once you got to your desired temperature, now the last half an hour, we want to wrap it and place it back on the grill. You can use butcher paper or aluminum foil. I like using butcher paper because it's a lot easier for me to get. So now comes the hardest part and that's letting the meat rest for 30 or 45 minutes. Let's see if you could do that. So now that you smoked your first rib, you could call yourself the master of the smoking in your family. And I mean ribs when I say smoke. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Follow us on social media. Thank you for watching.